Alrighty, so we have a fun one here. It's Drakkar Close versus Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens moving up for 145 to 155. He's lost four in a row, including that no contest uh, with Yaya. So he hasn't won in quite a while. You know, last loss was pretty brutal. It was a it was a straight elbow that sliced him right open. No, it's a it was a straight elbow that dropped him, and then he got sliced right open on the ground. Uh, and yeah, he prides himself in his chin, his durability, and you know, he might be questioning himself, is that going away now? Uh, but yeah, he's had a very tough schedule. He's in it, like recently, he's been matched up with very tough opponents, so it's no shame in losing to the opponents that he's fought, but they're obviously just a level above him. For Drakkar Close, uh, he has been, he has been like booked for a fight since January, since mid-January. And that was when he was supposed to fight. So, yeah, he's probably been booked for at least since mid-December. So that's that's quite a long training camp if he's just been training and training and training and cutting weight. He's cut weight a few times as well. I think he's faced off with opponents a few times, like, since then. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a tough year for him just with scheduling, just getting getting a fight booked and getting a fight to actually... Start has been a problem for him this year, definitely. Uh, but yeah, Jakar Close, he generally goes to decision. 85% of his UFC fights have gone to decision. I think the only one that hasn't was the Benil Dariush fight uh, when he got knocked out pretty badly. But yeah, generally does go to decision. All right, let's break down the strike into these two. All right, so for Jakar Close, he has fairly predictable movement, kind of just follows his opponent around the cage. Could say the same about Jeremy Stevens. He has predictable movement as well. He's able to walk down opponents, uh, just with the respect of his power, pretty much. So let's will be interesting to see if he is able to keep that respect at one fifty five. Uh, Jakar Close also likes forward pressure and pressuring his opponents on the back foot. Uh, he's got a very good hard right hand off the clinch. Jeremy Stevens generally has trouble with opponents who have really elusive movement. That's not the case here. So I'm talking about fighters like Moicano was a beat. Uh, yeah, not the case here. Close has fairly predictable movement and it's not very elusive at all. Uh, so what Jeremy Stevens looks for is those heavy twos, those heavy uppercuts, sits down on a lot of his punches. A lot of the times doesn't set up those power punches. Uh, but Jakar Close, he bites on feints. You can get him kind of very passive when you start feinting. Bobby Green did very well at that. He'll also look to clinch every time his, his opponent is in close proximity. Uh, so Jeremy can absolutely look for the uppercuts uh, when he is like predictably clinching every single time. Well, it's not every single time, but he does it quite frequently. Also, Jeremy could look for those intercepting straight knees. I'm pretty sure he caught someone with an intercepting straight knee. I can't remember, though. Who did he knock out? It wasn't Ross Pearson, because I was Dan Hooker. Was it Diego Sanchez? Oh, can't... One sec. I couldn't find him, but he has thrown those in the past. Trust me. All right, so Jeremy Stevens and Drakkar Close both utilize the low calf kick for a good uh, technique, and it's going to be... It's going to be a little battle inside the war here of that low calf kick battle. Uh, those guys will be beating each other's lead legs up. Alright, so in the grappling for these two. Alright, so... Drakkar Close, he looks to get the driving double uh, across the... Pretty much just drive you across the cage and then work his takedown on the fence, but you know, he can shoot from too far away. Again, the Jeremy Stevens intercepting knees could be there, the uppercuts could be there. Jeremy Stevens does have a good sprawl though himself. He has good initial scramble and a good initial uh good initial takedown defense on the first shot of his opponent, but you know, if you start chain wrestling him, the defenses fall down a little bit. Uh for Jakar Close he has poor top control, doesn't really hasn't really doesn't really control his opponent at all on the on top, uh, just kind of looks to dump him on the ground and doesn't and doesn't really have a plan after that. Uh, he also doesn't hand fight uh, when he's defending body locks or even chokes. Like, yeah, um, it's whatever. But 
Uh, he's also pretty defenseless off, off his back. If you get him on his back, he's pretty he's pretty useless as well. All right, so how these guys win fights? For Drakkar close. He has good leg kicks and good volume on the leg kicks. He has good cardio as well. He's you know he can push a decent pace, picks it up late generally. Uh, he can be a slow starter, especially if you get off to a good start and you start throwing feints and stuff. He, you can really get him out of his rhythm. Uh, but yeah, forward pressure as well really helps him win a lot of his fights. Uh, all right, so for Jeremy Stevens, he has power in his hands, one punch knockout power. Absolutely, we'll see at one fifty five. I would be surprised if he didn't carry that power up a upper weight class uh, his killer instinct as well he's got a good shin you know that elbow from from uh cater would have got anybody really uh but generally yeah he does have a good shin uh leg kicks as well also how he wins fights good take down defense a good cardio as well on the low all right so how these guys lose fights all right so for Drakkar Close, he has subpar takedown defense, especially when defending. Well, well, just his balance when he's defending takedowns is is really bad. It seems he seems really stiff. Uh, poor get ups as well. Can be controlled in the clinch easily. Gets frustrated easily in fights. Ditches the game plan. Striking tendencies as well that we discussed before. For Jeremy Stevens, you know, whenever he gets a step up a competition, I wouldn't say this is one of those times, but. Generally, when he, because he's been fighting very tough opponents in the in the past few years, uh, and he's probably just not up, up to that level. Just, uh, but he does, you know, have that equalizer that could put you out at one time, at any one time. So yeah, but skill for skill, he just outmatched by those guys that he's been matched up with recently. Also, the striking tendencies that we talked about four, and you know, maybe there's a weakness to the body. Aldo hit him there, good. Swanson hit him there, hurt him there. You know, I think the move to 155 would actually help that quite a fair bit, though. Uh, you know, not compromising your immune system or just your organs as much when you're not cutting as much weight. So, yeah. All right, so pass the victory for these two. All right, so for Jakar Close, leg kicks when he's going to be, you know, walking forward predictably onto them. Mix in your wrestling as well. Look to get him down. For Stevens, look to forward pressure. Make... Uh, make close feel your power early, leg kicks as well, uh, stiff jab, and the uppercut when he's reaching for the clinch, and also the straight knees if he's going to telegraph his takedown shots. Uh, so how I see this fight going, so I don't know if anyone's noticed, but I've been trying to fade Drakkar close at dog odds for a while now. Uh, I think he's pretty overrated, gets pretty overrated in a lot of his matchups. This is a... Uh, this is probably the best matchup for him, in my opinion, out of the last three scheduled bouts that he's had, like a... Uh, I'm talking, who are the other two guys? Uh, Herbert, Pena, and Stevens. I think this is actually the matchup that he's probably going to do the best in because Stevens won't really ex exploit his, his ground game and how bad he is on bottom. Uh, but yeah, that being said, Stevens does everything close does, just to a higher standard in my opinion, and is also much more dangerous, has much more power. On the feet, I think... Stevens is sharper. He'll have the power advantage as well, and he won't wilt like uh, close as previous opponents. Like he's got good cardio; he's not going to go away. Also, I don't believe that close, you know, would have a competitive fight against Calvin Cater. I think Calvin Cater would demolish uh, Trakar close, and you know Stevens was being very competitive in that fight. Uh, also, didn't think close would have much success with the wrestling. You know, maybe some stalling against the fence, but I think. Steven's going to be able to keep it on the feet here. Both are very, uh, fairly durable, though. Probably will go to the distance. Uh, but yeah, I think Stevens will be landing the better shots and then the better volume as well. All right, let's have a look at the line. All right, so the line's pretty much as I would line it. I think it's 55 to 60% in favor of Jeremy Stevens. Uh, I'm kind of waiting for his price to go up a little bit. Maybe a pick him, hopefully, because it seems like people overrate your car close especially in the betting, uh, you know, by the bookies. But, um, yeah, I'm looking to... I think J uh, Jeremy Stevens gets a done by decision. You know, going to decision, that the prop for that might be interesting. Uh, I think it does go to decision more often than not. But, yeah, I'm thinking Jeremy Stevens gets it done. And I'd play him at this price, but I'm hoping to get him at a little bit better than this.